I heard Tony had another house out here. I used to drive by the one in Henderson every day when I was a truck driver and was just wondering if he had another house out here. If so, where? Thanks, Frank. Nothing but respect for you, sir. Tony had a house. It wasn't, it wasn't, he owned property in Henderson. Where the property was, I don't know. It wasn't, it wasn't my business to know. But I know he invested in property because he told me. Uh, he owned one house that I know of. His brother Johnny owned the house, and so did his brother Vince. They lived out there. They owned homes. Patrick owned a home. Vic, the other brother, owned a home. They were not out in Vegas. Uh, I told you Johnny did, too. And that's where the brothers lived. Three brothers in Vegas, and I guess the other three in Chicago. Well, what do you got? You got Tony, you got Vince, and Johnny in Vegas. And he got the other three in Chicago, Michael. Tony, as far as I know, only one home, one home owned property in, in Anderson, which he lost, his wife lost after he died. She should have sold the property. What else? Psycho Derelict 01 wants to know um, if, if you have any Frank Schweiss stories, we did a video on Frank Schweitz. Yeah, we did, video. Frank. Yeah. yeah, watch the video. Watch the video. And again, I'll ask, did you hear anything about Jimmy Sutton? I don't know Jimmy Sutton. The name is familiar. I'd have to go back in my brain somewhere. You know, things happen and they go in your brain. You never forget them. And sometimes it takes a little nudge and it comes out. The name is familiar, but nothing familiar comes to my mind about things that I would have done with him. Colada, colada, grab your paper brew. Ask a question, he'll answer it for you. The mafia, the mafia, the mafia, the mafia. You better hit prescribe if you know what's good for you. Drinking a cup of coffee with Frank Colada. He'll tell you a lot, cause he's Colada. Okay, Melissa Bischoff. Bischoff. She said, I prescribed. Thanks, Frank, growing up outside of Chicago. Really enjoy hearing these stories from you. Someone there, inside and in the know. If you don't know, so you say so. Do you remember two brothers from your young Chicago days? The Burgrafs. The what? Burgrafs. 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 Probably saying it wrong. B-U-R-G-G-R-A-F-S. Go ahead. Berg, Berg graphs. All right, go ahead. They're not connected. They say they knew you and Tony from the neighborhood. I know who they are. One of the brothers serving time. Oh, I didn't know that. I know who they are. Okay. I know who they are. They were a little goofy, these two brothers. They had balls. I think one of them, yeah, they married some girls, too, that were friends of ours. A burger, burger, burger F. One kid I didn't like. I think I slapped the shit out of him. But then he'd be, he was balls. He had a little balls, this kid. Yeah, I know who they are. I didn't know the kid went to jail. One of them did. I, I could imagine that happening. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. They were short little guys like we all were. What the fuck? What, what did I get mad at them for? I forgot what it was. But not enough to really hurt them. Uh, I respected them, <laughs> two guys. I'm laughing because I'm picturing them. Yeah, I did know them. That's about all I could tell you. Berghoff. So you said you were in isolation. Yeah. In the hole. Right. And now everybody in the country is being told, stay at home, don't go out. And everybody's freaking out and they can't handle it. <laughs> what, 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 what can you do when you're in uh, confinement, right? You know, or quarantine like we are. There's not much you could do. At least being in quarantine in your house, you can watch TV. You got to hope the cable won't go out. And then you got to hope your com your com you know it. You know something about computers. Uh, it's it's very difficult. It really is difficult. But you got to do it. It's not that bad. I jump in the car. I put a pair of gloves on. If I pump gas, I don't pump gas. I <laughs> I get somebody to do that. I wear I wear a mask sometimes. When I touch stuff, I make sure I clean my hands as quick as I can. I don't put them to my face. There's times I stay home three days at a time. I have people that come and visit me, 
and they make sure they do clean their hands when they come in. I spray all my handles. A little trick, somebody taught it. If you don't have all that sanitizer, get a half a cup of, not a cup, a cap of bleach, pour it in a spray bottle with water, and spray your handles. That'll take off any any kind of germs that are on there. Uh, just take care of yourself. Like I said, we take too much, we took too much for granted. We're a dirty, dirty bunch of people. Toilet paper, they're crazy. You know what I mean? Come on. What do you use? Fifty, they buy the stick rolls, and then they wrap it around their hand, the woman. They use a whole roll. A whole roll! I told this one, I would not live with me. Are you nuts? When we were in jail, you had a whole roll that had to last your week. If you didn't, you were in big trouble, man. You're going to walk around with a stinky ass. You learn that stuff. You're at home. You're free. You got a shower. Get a rag. Wet it. Go in the shower. Wash up. Clean the towel. Soap and water. You clean your underwears. You throw them in the wash. You can do the same thing with the rag. It's no different. All of a sudden, you skeeve everything. You got to buy 15 rolls of towels. Paper, toilets, towels. And I'm going to tell you something I learned in the supermarket. Young people. People in their 20s, even a little younger, maybe up until they're 30, 35. They're very helpful to older people. I mean, I go in the store, I drive the little, the little electric cart with my little machine, pull the head over my head, I want nobody to spot me. I got spotted in the store today. I was like giving it like this, the guy's like, I know Frankie. So I said, don't tell anybody you've seen me here. I usually have somebody to do that, but this guy's out working. So uh, everybody's so nice to you, this age group. Now, there are a few people. They're hoarders. They grab this. They grab that. They don't even need it. And I'm a loud mouth guy. I tell them, what are you grabbing? Two bundles of toilet paper. Grab one. How about the guy next to you? Mind your own business. Fuck you, I tell them. You know, I'm only good for two shots. I'm going to knock you out one and up shots if I catch you. So I, I know I could talk and say what I want to say. Uh, you know the meanest people in the store? I hate to say this. Our older people. They actually think you're supposed to be humble to them. They see me with the cart. They give me dirty looks. I, I can't walk the whole store. I run out of wind. So I drive the cart. I'm legit. You think I look like right? Look like Mario. That game, Mario. You know, Mario. That's what I feel like when I blah, 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 when I go around. Uh, but the old people, they get mad at everybody. They moan. They groan through the whole star. And I and I laugh. I make jokes with them, and they look at me. I laugh a little bit. I tell them, "This is life. Live with it. You went through all this shit all your life. They don't have to be humble to you, these kids." But they are. Thank God they are. Like I said, the younger ones, have, like in their 17s, 18s, they don't know any better. You know, it's their parents that should be teaching them. The ones that are 35, like after 35, into like 55, they're not as many as that are that helpful. The women are. The men, they're a little standoffish. So I see that stuff, and I don't look for help. Like say I gotta get out of the cart and reach up. Lady say, I'll get that for you, sir. No, no, I could get it. no no let me get it. Which I think is very nice. So this is what you gotta watch out. The older people they get a little grumpy. Maybe I I should understand that. If anybody should be grumpy, it's me. But I'm not. Because I know you can only being grumpy makes you more miserable. And I don't want to be miserable. Hi, uh, this is um Paul Warren. Paul wants to know, he said, great video. I would like to ask about Tony trying to fix the poker games in Vegas and anything about Benny Binion down at the horseshoe. And I responded that, you know, yeah, there's something about him trying to, to cheat at the uh, Las Vegas Country Club. It was like Debbie Reynolds' husband or something, right? I don't know about him. No? What about Doyle Brunson? No? Okay. I'll tell you about Tony's personal life a little bit. Okay. Yeah. You know, you're asking me about Tony's personal life, his gambling. I know he was a gambler, degenerate gambler. I didn't get myself involved in it. It wasn't my business. 
I know he had guys working for him that used to go, he used to bankroll him because he couldn't go into casinos. And they'd send her a, a, a what do you call it, poker game. He had a guy here, a guy there, and they sent her. Maybe they'd have the dealer, too. Who knows? Some of these guys were masters with these cars. They were good. Tony had all these guys. He couldn't do it in all the joints. Uh, there was only some places you could get away with, like the dunes, the front there. You know, all these poker rooms are not owned by the casino. That's why you could get away with it. As we knew, a lot of the owners in the casinos, they didn't own the poker rooms. They were like a Russian that would consign a space in the casino and pay rent to the casino. So that's the way these poker rooms work. And then they'd have guys that run these. And there was this one guy, he's still alive. His name was Doug Dalton. Famous guy. He's a friend of mine right today, Doug Dalton. Doug Dalton. He ran four, four poker rooms. The Bellagio, I, I know for sure. Caesars and a couple other. He's retired. Was he criminal? No. He knew what was going on. But they gave him respect. They wouldn't do anything because Doug was a good guy. But a lot of these other places, you think they were going to go up to the guy who was the boss, hey, we're going to cheat in your room? No, they wouldn't tell him that. They'd work their way, and the guy'd say, oh, these are Tony's friends. He didn't want to know if they were stealing. He'd go to another tree tables and watch. All poker. It's different, different, different ball game in the casinos. It wasn't my business to know what Tony was doing there. That's the way he made a lot of money. Okay? Got it? Remember. What else? Joe LaCosta, or LaCasta. Uh, great job, Frank. Would love to hear one on Angelo the Hook and Fiore. Uh, LaPetri. Angelo LaPetri the Hook. Dangerous man. Him and his brother, Jimmy LaPetrio. They call him the Hook. He'd snatch you, that motherfucker, with that. He'd get you, him and his brother. Dangerous guys, especially his brother. I told a little story about him the time he beat some guy up in a lounge. I, I, it's, it's in one of these tapes. I'm not going to repeat it. But he was a violent man. And when these guys come to get you, the two brothers, you might want to commit suicide before they got you. They would just totally beat you and beat you for hours. They pulled, oh, they were just dangerous. Very, very brutal guys. And these guys put Frankie Calabrese to work for him. He knew what to do, Frankie. So he went with these dangerous guys. So he learned a lot from these guys. And that's part of that Angelo LaPetrio La crew. They called the hook, Angelo the hook. Yeah, bad crew, bad crew. What up? Great Scott. He said if Tony would have taken the plea deal, remember you said take the deal, and eventually gotten out, what do you think his future would have been? Would he have been allowed to stay in Vegas and run things, or would he have been called back to Chicago? Uh, I, the question is a good question. Uh, if he would have took the deal, of course, his brother would have been murdered. Michael would have been murdered. But Tony would have got out, and he would have had no crew. He would have got out, and he would be lucky that they, they would have let him live. Of course, by that time, they had all been in jail, and he would have had a life. And Tony, from what I understand, from an agent, tried also, excuse me, <coughs> you see the way I did it with my hand? Tried also to make a deal to cooperate, but they didn't need him. This is what an agent told me. Do I find it hard to believe? No. Uh, Tony just wanted a family life at this point in life. I know he did. He was happy with his son, his wife. He did it all. He had money. Casinos were down. What was he going to do? Try to be legit. They'd have left him alone, probably. But there's always an agent that would probably want to put him in jail a little longer. That's about the best I could tell you there. He would have had no connections at all. 
back in Chicago or in Vegas. Probably would have moved to Arizona. That's what I would think. Okay, Lance Howard said, I like to uh, provide an uh, excellent insight into why, uh, into why you felt Tony and his brother got killed. What was it like to testify about all the things you knew took place? You know, testifying about all the things I'd done and knew, of course, it was very difficult. Very, very difficult. Uh, because I wasn't growing up, raised that way. I never found it fun. I didn't try to please anybody. I found it disgusting. Now I talk about it, it's all over, it's done. I could say what I want to say. Am I bragging? No. I'm just telling the world what they should and need to know. Whether you want to know it or not. Let's say I'm er er airing out my dirty laundry. Uh, it wasn't a good life. At the time, I thought it was. And again, I never took pleasure in any testimony I gave. Never. Does that answer your question? Yep. Um, Mr. Collada, this is from uh, Steve Wiedner. Will you be producing a DVD for sale of your tour? Thank you for your channel. Steve, I haven't thought about producing a thing of my tour, which isn't a bad idea. If I could get this fat ass over here, not fat ass, he's a good guy. Off his ass, he could do it. He could do it. This guy is smart. I couldn't do this shit. I need this guy. Yeah, we need each other. We need each other. He's created this. You see what this is there? Looks pretty cool. Huh? It's got the wrong way. Robots. See that pizza box? See it? Look at the back. I even signed the back of that. See that? And then on each side, see? All right. Now, there's more to come. I don't even know how to open this mother. Oh, there it is. You open it up, just like a pizza. Oh, there's a pizza in there. Look. You see the pizza? Isn't that something? It don't, it don't look too good, does it? That's a stuffed pizza. It's a stuffed pizza. It's got an upper crust. The name of my joint, the upper crust. You stick your finger in there. You take this. See what that is? Huh? See what it is? Hey, the cheese. Watch this. What do I know? You know what this is not? You stick it in the computer. It's a pistol. You play it off your computer. What do you call it? J-plug? J USB. USB. Pull it, pull it I can't. Yeah, it's like that. I don't know. I can't. I got too much in my hand. Oh, you see? You got it? Pretty clever, huh? Did I think of this? Nah. This guy done this. Look how nice of that. I don't know what he's charging for these things. But whatever it is. We're going to sell them for about 100 to 200 a piece. Did you hear that? Pizza box. And you got all the contents on this. Yeah, the, you got the disc and then the USB DVD. stick's going to be filled with uh, this is This stuff. is a very, uh, this is classy, really classy. And this is one of the items that he came up with to sell. I, I, I think I... We're going to be selling these because, damn it, we got to keep earning right now. We got, yeah, we got to yeah, we gotta earn. Yeah. What do you think, this is free? Right. Here. Anyway, that's one of the products we got, along with these lovely cups. Take a look. I, I tell you, I got people who are driving me crazy for these cups. They really do. Yeah, no. Hold, hold it I, right there. Hold it right there. Or like this way? You see my name on there? I turn it a little bit more. You see that? Yeah. I signed my name on there, and I said, well, that ink will roar off. So I put tape on it, and I washed it 100 times, and it's still on there. That means if I take this tape off, that ink is still going to be on there, my name. I might try one day to take the scotch tape off. That will save me money when I get these things printed. Mm -hmm. I'm always thinking about money, and I got a drink. Hey, listen, 
I really hope that you're enjoying this. As I said, I'm not really a healthy guy. And I'm not looking for sympathy. This gives me incentive to live on. You know, I enjoy people. I was always basically a shy guy growing up. I was always shy. As I said, I used to have thick glasses. I've had LASIK surgery. I don't need these things. I could do I could do it. I could do everything without these glasses. But I wore these things for 60 years. It's hard to get rid of some after 60 years. They're they're uh, reading glasses actually. But I'm trying my hardest for your younger people because you've got maybe 30, 40, 50 years. History is going to go on with me. When I'm gone, long gone, I'm still going to be around on YouTube. I'll be haunting everybody. <laughs> oh, God. I feel sorry for you all that I don't like. Oh, my God. I'll be pulling on your foot in the fucking morning. What else, Adam? All right, everybody. We have our Ancestry DNA kit. Somebody on the channel asked if uh, uh, where Frank's parents were from, what part of Italy, and uh, uh, we're going to narrow it way down. Somebody else said that they thought that Frank might be their father. Jeez. I think that they were just joking around, okay? I don't think they were serious. But we're going to do this, Ancestry DNA, and we're going to find out what Frank's all about. Sound good, Frank? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do this. You got to spit in a tube. I got to spit in the tube? Yeah. Where's the tube? I'll give you the tube right down here. You got to spit into the tube, okay? Aye, aye, aye. So here's the tube. You want to open that up? You got you to fire it up. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so that tube, you want to spit in it. So Frank's going to spit in the tube. We're going to fill it up, and uh, we'll collect this uh, sample. <laughs> That's okay. What I like it, yeah. All right, good. Now, you're going to take that top part right there. Unscrew it, okay? Oh. And, now, and now take the other one and screw it on. And you're going to screw it, and then it's going to it's gonna break that blue fluid into the thing. So you got to twist it. Give it a good twist. It, it breaks a seal. You will know it when the blue solution has gone into the thing. So you've got to turn it more. Turn it. Oh, you're killing I, me. I can't do it. Hmm. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. How's it going, man? Well, it's going down. Oh, you got it. Yeah. Okay, you got it. Thank God. I thought I was going to have to use the hand sanitizer. <laughs> oh, for Christ's sake. <laughs> okay, so now that you've done that. Shake it? Give it a good shake. Yeah, a good shake. Shake the tube for at least five seconds. Now you're going to place the tube into the collection bag. Okay, this is the collection bag. How do I know you ain't trying to frame me with my fucking DNA? I, I don't know. you got to trust me. I know it's hard. I trust you gotta Tony. trust me. <laughs> We're gonna have one I trust Tony. Yeah, right? <laughs> okay, yeah. So drop the tube into that bag and then you're gonna pull that, seal that yeah, bag yeah, over the top. Yeah, you got it. You got this. Okay. Now you stick it in the box. What are you mailing this out? Yeah. Really? Yeah, they're gonna go to, it's gonna go to the lab and then they're gonna test it and then they're going to they're gonna send the results. So we're going to find out your DNA, Frankie. Uh, uh. <laughs> Pretty cool. And then uh, we'll see if you have any uh, kids that you don't know about. I had this done a long time ago. <laughs> did you? But not like that. Oh, the this girl is... did it. She went to Utah. Uh -huh. And I, I got the results and I sent it to my brother. And uh, my father and mother were born in different parts of Italy. My father's Sicilian, my mother was but A's. So we did my my father shuffle southern Italy. It's a little village. And it shows uh, all the relatives. A lot of them had the name Cicero. I was quite surprised because I knew a lot of people Cicero. with the name Cicero. And they were related, kins. Uh, Strange. But we'll see how this one works. Oh, yeah, this is going to be I interesting. I think this is a good one. It's going to be the interesting. Other one, she was accurate. Yeah. You know, she had great grandfathers. 
Well, it'll also let us look up things on their website, like um, immigration papers, things like that, that uh, your parents would have signed. How my name was actually signed. Correct. When they got to Ellis Island. Yeah. From what I was told, when my grandparents got there, my grandfather, my father was two years old. And uh, he was born in Italy. But he lied. They lied and said he was born in America. Uh-huh. Their name was, I believe, a one L and one T. But when they got to Ellis Island, they didn't have papers like everybody else. So they come, all you people, all you WAPs without papers. Right. WAPs without papers. Get to the right. And my grandfather, from when I was told, told him how he spelled the name, but they added an L and they added a T. Hmm. So that's how we wound up with the name Kulata. Two L's and two T's. It's either got one L or one T, or one L and one T. But anyway, I wound up with two L's and two T's. <laughs> well, That's fact. I, I went from Fiatkowski to flowers. Fiat? <laughs> Fiatkowski. Oh, fucking German. No, no, no. Polish. 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 Yeah, Polish. Same thing. Polish. Yeah, German, same German, thing. Same thing. Yeah. Same. No, Hitler came from Germany, not okay. Poland. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, you're all smart guys. I don't know, Frank. Let's wrap it. We're going to wrap. Again, I got to get it. You know, I had him change the coffee and a commercial. I had to put a little water in there. I don't want you to think as I'm a coffee addict. I drink decaf anyway. Again, cheers. Chin Dan. God bless all of you.